Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I recently purchased a Kinex Screaming Serpent roller coaster for an upcoming video, and I'm going to be making some potentially permanent modifications to this roller coaster. And I thought before I do that, I'd like to show it off how the manufacturer originally intended. So if you'll indulge me, let's have a look at the stock standard Kinex Screaming Serpent roller coaster. Here we have laid out the basic building blocks of any Kinex set. We have these plastic rods of multiple different lengths and these plastic connectors of multiple different angles. These snap together by attaching the end of the rods into the sockets of the connectors or putting the connectors onto the side of the rods or passing the rods through the middle of the connectors which allows them to spin freely which is handy for machines and moving parts. Now the length of these rods is not entirely arbitrary it is actually such that if we connect two rods at a 90 degree angle and make a triangle, then the next rod up can form the hypotenuse. That means that the length of any given rod is the length of the previous rod multiplied by the square root of 2. Now, if you weren't paying attention in school thinking, I don't need to know this hypotenuse stuff, then you're right. Someone else knows it and they made this for us. We have over here some of our roller coaster specific parts in lime green. These are much more flexible than the normal parts to help us make the track conform to the loops and turns and features that we want to have in our roller coaster track. So these bits clip together, then our purple rail head can clip in on top to form our roller coaster track. Then we have, of course, the roller coaster train itself. Now we can take a closer look at how the roller coaster train and the track interact. Where a conventional train has just two wheels, you can see that our roller coaster train has six. These include two running wheels on top that support the train's weight when it is experiencing positive g-forces, like it is right now, two side friction wheels that prevent any lateral movement of the train, and two upstop wheels that keep the train on the track during negative g's on airtime hills or sustained inversions. Oh no, they appear to have died of natural causes. Let's take a look now at the track layout of our Screaming Serpent. The ride starts at the point of no return, the bottom of the lift hill where the train will then spend a few minutes suspensefully ascending. As the train approaches the top of the hill, it will detach from the chain and dive down a steep descending left hand turn, and then into a vertical loop, an airtime hill, and then a final turn back to the start. Altogether, it looks a little something like this. And here it is at 50% speed. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any guesses as to what modifications you think I might be making to this roller coaster, let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.